All right, guys, so in my last video going over the Packers impending free agents for the 2024 offseason, we took a very quick look at the current cap situation for the Green Bay Packers, and I asked you guys if you would want me to break down the current cap situation for the Packers for the 2024 offseason, and a lot of you did say yes. So in today's video, we're going to take a deep look into the Packers salary cap, break it down. Now, this video is just going to be simply looking at all the numbers, what they look like, what certain contracts look like, and what players could would be cap casualties to clear up more space on this salary cap. Now, if you guys want a video of me fixing the Green Bay Packers salary cap where I go in as GM and fix what I think will happen, you know, cut players that I think will be cut, restructure players that I think will be restructured, go down and leave a comment and also leave a like on the video. And of course, if you want more Packers news analysis and updates every single day, this goes throughout the off season. We're gonna be breaking down salary cap, free agency, and of course the draft. So if that does interest you, everything Green Bay Packers is here right on this channel. Go down and click subscribe. All right, so now let's dive into it, waste no more time and bring up the screen. And currently right now we're gonna bring up the list of all the current salary caps for the NFL teams. And we see Packers kind of close to the bottom here, uh, below midway here, and they are actually $2.8 million over the cap. So everything in red in parentheses means you're over the cap. You, you have negative money as of right now. And then also effective $7.3 million over the cap. That's basically considering what the draft class will cost for 2024 and how much over the cap the Packers would be at that point. Then we see the Packers have an active cap spending of 245 million and dead money only at 5.6 million. Obviously getting rid of that Aaron Rodgers contract all last year helps the Packers more for 2024. So they really don't have that much dead money than what we're used to seeing. Now going over to the Packers roster and looking at the salary cap numbers. I know it may look like a lot, but we're just basically gonna go over some of the biggest contracts here um, for the Green Bay Packers at first. The biggest one for 2024 is David Bakhtiari. We see here his cap number is $40 million. Uh, this is one that one way or the other is going to be changed, whether that's a restructure or Bakhtiari getting cut slash traded. I'm almost certain that he will not remain on the salary cap at that $40 million mark. That is way too much, even for if David Bakhtiari was fully healthy and starting at left tackle, that would still uh, get changed. And, and Bakhtiari had only played in one game in 2023. Who knows his future in the NFL, let alone the Green Bay Packers, if he's going to be able to even play. Um, we'll dive down into that a little bit more here in a second. Kenny Clark, $27.49 million cap hit. This is another one that I could see being restructured out. A lot of these big ones, uh, you know, it's because of restructures in the past year and the Packers simply kicking the can down the road. And yeah, it's not the best idea to keep doing that. But when you're in a situation where you need to clear up some money, it's kind of your only option other than trading or cutting the player. And obviously the Packers, I don't think are going to trade or cut Kenny Clark. Same goes with Jair Alexander. A lot of people are wondering out of that Instagram post, if, if this is his last year and he wants to be traded, it just doesn't make much financial sense at all for the Green Bay Packers to trade Jair Alexander at all. And now with the firing of Joe Barry, I feel like Jair is going to be ready to come back to Green. Bay. I think he always has been. His mentality, I think, changed after he was suspended for that week, and I don't think he has any ill will against the Packers front office right now, and I think that Instagram post was just, you know, him praising or being thankful for his six years in Green Bay so far. So his cap number is at 23.9 million. Aaron Jones cap number for the upcoming season, it jumps way up. He took a discount last year. I mean, Aaron Jones is the definition of a Green Bay Packer taking hometown discounts and then playing his heart out. We saw the last four games over 100 yards, kind of showcasing why he needs to be back in 2024. But at 17 million, that's a very, very high number for a running back. I would argue it's probably in the top three of cap hits, maybe even number one um, of all running backs for 2024. Then we have Preston Smith at 16 million. That's also a high number. Rashawn Gary at 15.9 million. I'd say that's fair for him. Elton Jenkins at 14.4. Devondre Campbell at 14.2. I say that's a very high number for what we got from Devondre in 2023. He seems like he took a couple steps back. Uh, you know, you could tie it up to injuries. You could tie it up to him getting older, but he clearly wasn't the player we signed two years ago in 2023. Jordan Love's cap hit will be 12.5 million in 2024. Um, his contract can be looked at again in May. That 
is when we may see a, uh, a big long-term extension for Jordan Love, which could either raise this a little bit or lower it, depending on how the Packers structure that contract. If they need to clear more cap room, they'll probably backload that contract a ton and maybe even lower this amount from $12 million. But nonetheless, Jordan Love for this year, it's pretty cheap. At $12 million, that is cheap for a quarterback, a starting quarterback that is the future of your team. That is cheap. Darnell Savage is at $5 million. He's an impending free agent. If you looked at my video, this basically is a void year on his contract. So no matter what, we're paying him that $5.4 million. That could get lowered through an extension. And then we get down into the lower contracts, which we're not really going to go over because they're rookies uh, or players on their rookie contracts. So there's not much to change there other than them being traded or cut, which a lot of these guys obviously are not going to be. Lucas Van Ness, I guess Eric Stokes is could be a trade candidate. Uh, Quay Walker, Devontae White, Josh Nyman. Um, he, I think he has a void year on his contract. Christian Watson, Musgrave, and so on and so forth. All right, so now let's dive down into the David Bakhtiari ordeal. And this is a very confusing one for a multitude of reasons. First and foremost, I mean, 16% of your salary cap in 2024, that is not going to fly. Regardless, if Bakhtiari was fully healthy, all pro left tackle, that's not going to fly. When you look at a pre-June 1st, so this basically means uh, the Packers were to cut slash trade him before June 1st. Since this is the last year of his deal, it doesn't matter if it was if it's a post-June 1st or pre-June 1st. This basically means they can make a decision on him before for the new league year start in the middle of March. So right now, if they were to cut slash trade him, uh, they would incur $19 million in dead money, but they would save $20.9 million off the cap. The problem that lies here is if David Bakhtiari files an injury grievance after the Packers were to cut him, then until that gets resolved in court, the Packers are on the hook for his entire contract. So that's kind of the problem there. He would have to pass a physical, then potentially get traded for the Packers to then clear up that $20 million because if they simply were to outright cut him, he could argue, well, it's an injury-related cut, file a grievance, go to court about it to earn all of his money back, and then the Packers cap is held up with that amount anyways, and you don't have the player. So it's a very, very tricky situation, and I, I'm very intrigued to see how Russ Ball and the Green Bay Packers handle this, because I, for one, am just confused. I, I don't know which way this is going to go. Now, as we see here, Kenny Clark, he is signed through 2024, so this is the last year um, on his deal. So the Packers either A, can extend him to lower this amount, or again, restructure, which would just add more void years and and raise this amount for 2025. So right now, if Kenny Clark, Clark plays through 2024 and then moves on from the Packers, he's going to be a $13 million cap charge next year. And that's as of right now. And that probably will go up if the Packers extend, if the Packers void years, right? So right now, if the Packers were to cut or trade Kenny Clark, $24 million dead, $3 million cap savings pre-June 1st. That's obviously not going to happen. Um, Post-June 1st, uh, the Packers could you know, incur 10 million dead, $17 million cap savings. So theoretically there, the Packers could trade Kenny Clark with a post June 1st designation and save a little bit on the cap and just try to eat this contract and move on with it. He's still 28 years old. So he very well could see like a three year extension here and then hopefully lower this amount. But again, similar to David Bakhtiari, a $27 million cap hit 11.1%. That's just simply not going to remain the same in 2024. All right, so now moving on to the third highest contract, that is Jair Alexander. His cap hit in 2024 is $23 million. It raises up to 25 in 2025 and 27 in 2026. Now, he only has one void year, and it's only at $2.3 million. So this is an easy one for me. The Packers are going to restructure Jair's contract, and if they do so and push the max amount of salary turn it into bonus and push it out, they can save up to $10 million. Now that does then push out more of that money over the next years. And, and you know, again, you're kicking the can down the road and you're going to have to deal with it sometime. Restructuring doesn't get rid of the money. It doesn't save money long term. It simply saves money right now. You're, you're just not paying it right now. And you're saying, hey, I'll pay it later. But in the current situation the Packers are in, they're probably going to have to do so yet again with someone like Jair, Jair Alexander. As you see here, save $10 million on a restructure. He's not going to be cut. He's not going to be traded, right? If you look at pre-June 1st, cut slash trade, $27 million dead, and they'd also lose $3 million on their salary cap. It, it doesn't make any sense. Even if you went post-June 1st, yeah, there's kind of an option there. You know, $8 million dead, they'd save $15 million. So theoretically, yeah, post-June 1st designation, the Packers could trade Jair Alexander. I, I just don't see it happening. Before we dive into the second half of the salary cap breakdown, I want to talk to you guys about today's video sponsor, BetUS, and you can get a 125% deposit match with the link down below on BetUS, and that's up to $2,500. So for example, if you were to deposit $100, then you'll have $225 to play with. 
And guys, it is the last day to enter in the Super Bowl ticket giveaway from BetUS. The winners are going to be announced tomorrow, and this is for two Super Bowl tickets, and it's very easy to participate. So first, place a bet on any NFL line and share your bet slip on X slash Twitter. That's a minimum of $25. So use the link down below, sign up, make a deposit, get a 125% deposit match, and place a bet on an NFL line to be entered in the giveaway. Second, tag at BetUS underscore official and the friend you would be inviting to the Super Bowl over on Twitter. And third, in that tweet, use hashtag BetUSLVIII. So for example, over on the BetUS to be entered in the giveaway, you could simply place a money line bet on the Detroit Lions, the San Francisco 49ers, enter that for $25 minimum, tag them on Twitter, use the hashtag, and you'll be entered in the giveaway. Also in BetUS, there's plenty of other cool things to bet on. They're starting to release more and more uh, draft bets as the draft gets closer and closer. You can bet on if the Chargers make the playoffs um, in 2024 now that they hired Jim Harbaugh, their head coach. Love that hire, by the way. You can bet on the Gatorade color in the Super Bowl. There's so many different things in future bets and prop bets and live bets during the game that you can do on BetUS. So again, if you want a 125% deposit match, Go down, click the link in the description. Thank you to BetUS for sponsoring this video. Now back to the salary cap. All right, so now we see Aaron Jones, and this is an interesting one because you have a running back that's 29 years old. Running backs start to hit that drop off right at this point, um, and his cap hit $17 million or 6.8%. That is extremely high um, for a running back, and he also has void years added onto his contract, um, which then you know has $6.6 .6 million next year. So even if Aaron Jones were to play out this season at $17 million and the Packers were to move on next offseason, they'd be on the hook for $6.6 .6 million off their 2020. 25 salary cap. Now, if you wanted to say cut or trade Aaron Jones pre June 1st, they would incur 12 million dead, save 4.6 million. If it was a post June 1st, they'd incur 5 million dead and save 11 million um, off the salary cap. So that definitely is an option. I know we don't want to see it happen. It's just they're kind of in a rock and a hard place right now with Aaron Jones' contract. If you were to do a restructure, you could save $7.7 .7 million off the cap. So that cap hit would come down to 10 million, but then you'd add that 7.7 .7 into void years. And then next year, if you were to move on, from him that would be what 13 million dollars against your salary cap so like i said you're not getting rid of that money you're just moving it and it's like what can you deal with now so i'm very interested to see how the packers deal with aaron jones maybe he takes another pay cut that could very well happen now that would actually save money overall because it's a pay cut uh but you know i'm not expecting him to he's already done that, i think twice now he's 29 he's probably on his last contract in his nfl career he deserves the money aaron jones man just a great guy um, but I'm very interested to see what the Packers do here. Next, we have Preston Smith, and this is something that could definitely be changed, but uh, it's it's a little concerning right now. You, you see $16 million cap hit that jumps up $10 million from 2023. Then in 2025, 2026, 17 million, 18 million respectively. This was kind of like a confusing one when they gave him that big deal all the way to 2026 when he'll be 34 years old. That one kind of confused me. It didn't seem like a, a, a Russ Ball type of move. And right now, if they were to cut slash trade him pre-June 1st, they'd incur 13 million dead and only save 2.5 million. So it doesn't make sense. If they were to cut slash trade post-June 1st, this one makes way more sense. You know, dead money, $4 million, they'd save $12 million. But you have to be under the cap before the new league year start, and you can't post June 1st, designate people until after the new league year start. So they'd have to be under by that point and then make this decision. This is something that could definitely happen if another team wants to trade for Preston for a late-round pick or the Packers simply move on and then put Lucas Van Ness into stardom next to Rashawn Gary. That very well could happen at $16 million in 2024, not to mention 2025 and 2026. A restructure doesn't make much sense for me. They could save money, but it just makes 2025 and 2026 and even that void year way, way worse for a player that's already 31. Next, we see Devondre Campbell. Talked about him already and how he really took a step down. Last year's salary cap only at $5.5 million. Very manageable. It jumps up to 14 and then 12 and then 12 yet again. Again, another player that it just like signed through 2026 at 33 years old. It just didn't make much sense, you know, maybe at the time of Aaron Rodgers. But right now the Packers are just a young team and they're kind of, you know, keeping that mantra and going forward with a young roster. So there's outliers like this that just don't make too much sense when they have not been playing well or not playing up to par with what their contract is. And he's similar to Preston Smith. It doesn't make much sense with a pre-June 1st trade slash cut 
you know, 11 million dead, only saved 2.6 million. But if you go post June 1st, this is very, you know, applicable. 3 million points, 3.6 million dead, and you'd save 10.5 million. So my best guess is the Packers do a post June 1st cut or trade with, with Devondre Campbell here. Move forward with Quay Walker, Isaiah McDuffie, and likely a mid round draft pick. You know, it was a great couple of years for Devondre, mainly that first year. Uh, but it's just going downhill since then. He looks a lot slower, less reactionary, you know, not a great cover linebacker anymore like he once was. You know, it, it just it, it's not worth the money for the next three years. That's an absurd amount of money for an OK linebacker. And Quay Walker is the future at linebacker. And I'm, I'm hyped for him under a new defensive coordinator. And I think they just got to go younger there and cheaper there. Uh, so likely Devondre Campbell played his last snap in the green and gold. We'll see what happens, but that's my best guess. All right, going over a couple more. Darnell Savage, I talked about this in my free agency video. He has a void year in 2024, so he's an impending free agent, and the Packers are on the hook for $5.4 million. If they were to extend him, say, to a two-year deal, they could kind of backload it, add a couple void years on it, and then push some of this money out. That would get lumped into his new contract, and then they could kind of layer it in a way where his cap hit you know, is, is maybe this or lower for this year, but you still get the player, right? Right now, you wouldn't get the player, and you're paying him $5.4 million, so it doesn't make much sense. So, you know, Darnell Savage, I thought had a, had a good back end of the season. The Packers have no depth at safety. They, they don't have many players on the roster currently under contract at safety. So they very well could bring back Darnell Savage. It just really depends what he wants or what that deal would look like. He still is only 26, so he very well could keep growing. Then finally, we have Jordan Love, who I kind of mentioned. Uh, this is the last year of his deal at 12.7 million. This is obviously going to uh, be an extension. The Packers aren't going to go into 2024 without an extension for Jordan Love. That's just simply not going to happen with all they've committed to him and all that's happened this season that that's just not going to happen look for a jordan love extension may june or july it's going to happen he's going to be one of the highest paid quarterbacks in the nfl it's just going to come down to how they structure that contract if they backload it or what they do i'm very interested to see what they do but a 12 million dollar cap hit right now that's very low it very well could be a much higher once that extension happens and they structure the deal the way they want so that does it for the salary cap breakdown for 2024 and the Green Bay Packers. Like I said, this one was just kind of diving down into all the contracts, taking a look at them, looking at some of the players that the Packers could make decisions on here in the coming months. If you want me to make the video, like I said, taking control of the salary cap myself and kind of becoming the GM and making the moves and what that would look like, let me know down below. But that about does it for this video. I appreciate you guys coming by. If you could, please have a like down below. It supports the channel a ton, but I'll catch you on the next one. And as always, go Pack Go.